Baby, you don't know what you do to me. Between me and you, I feel like chemistry. I won't let no one come and take your place. Cause the love you give, you can't be replaced. So no one else do. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do in this tutorial is we're gonna use whatever spray um, you can find. I use the Eben holding spray. People use got to be, it doesn't matter. Um, either one of those just to secure the wig cap. Um, make sure to cut the little ear tabs off. I always forget to do that whenever I start and y'all ignore the wig cap. I know there's a big hole in the back, but it's fine. So um, after that, then what you want to do is go ahead and spray over the top of the wig cap and then use a blow dryer on a cool setting and go ahead and make sure it's dry before you start cutting. And the next thing I do is go in with a little pair of eyebrow scissors just to cut the extra cap off. Um, you can cut it in any different way. Make sure you're not being Speedy Gonzalez with this part. You want to make sure you do it very slowly because it's very easy to cut yourself. I've done it so many times. And then as soon as you put the free spray on, you're going to start feeling the burn. So make sure you take your time. This is definitely sped up. It took me a lot longer. If the sides don't stay down all the way, it's not that big of a deal. It depends. I just said forget it and put it behind my ear. Then the next thing you want to do is get some makeup that's close to your skin color or maybe a little bit lighter under your skin color and you want to put that over the perimeter of the cap and wherever you're going to part it so if you're doing a middle part you want to put the makeup through the middle of your head and if you're doing a side part you want to put it on the side anywhere where you're going to see the scalp This wig is also sponsored by Bios here on Amazon. This is their HD 20 inch unit. Um, I'll leave the link down below in the description box. But it's a really nice wig and I urge you guys to go check it out. So the next step is going to be the glue process. Um, basically for this what you want to do is put it on the perimeter of the cap. In my defense... Um, this is not what I usually do, so don't follow what I just did on here. It was really hot, and I was ready to get this over with. But, um, you don't want to put it on the base of the cap like I did, or majority on the cap, because it'll just make the outer part of the cap white, and take a little bit longer to dry, because there is makeup on it as well. So you want to put it mainly in front of the wig cap, and work downwards, never work upwards, because it can, um, cause the wig cap to lift as well. Another thing you want to do is you want to wait for the glue to dry between layers. I also did not do that because I was very tired and it was hot and I just wanted to get this video over with. Um, I install wigs all the time, so listen to the voiceover more so than you're watching that part of the video. Um, but you want to make sure you do that so that everything is seamless and you don't see like a little film in the back. But it's not hard to disguise at all. And once you find out where you want to place the wig along the uh, wig cap outline, you want to just take your rat tail comb and start working it into the glue to make sure that it sets correctly. So instead of just putting the elastic band right onto the wig, you want to try to work it in so that you don't have any lifts. Then what I go ahead and do is I cut the ear tabs. You can do this part before or after. Um, it's probably easier to do it before so that you can put the glue straight into the wig. Um, with this, it kind of, the ear tabs are getting on my nerves a little bit. Once again, I didn't follow all the basic rules that I was supposed to, but you know, it's just, it came out with the same outcome. Just make sure that if you do make a mistake, it's not a detrimental one. Try to, if you're going to work fast, make sure there's things that you can come back from. The worst thing you want to do is mess up a wig and you have nothing else you can do for it. Um, so if it's anything that could potentially ruin the wig, make sure to take your time and think about what you're about to do because there's no going back.
After that, I just wrapped the elastic band around the perimeter of the wig just to let the glue set in for a little bit. Um, the wig is still a little wet, so I went ahead and took my cheese silk infusion and um, put a little bit of that. You only need a little bit. Put it into the palm of my hand, worked it through, and then blow dried the wig. Um, I used it on a hot setting, but once again, it got really hot, and so I just kind of left it mildly dry. But it was pretty much dry, but not all the way. So once I take the elastic band off and it's time to start cutting, usually I see people use, um, you know, eyebrow raises and I used to use those. I still do somewhat, but what I mainly like is the small eyebrow shears because they're able to get more um, without pulling at certain things. That was my main concern with the eyebrow razor. But um, I just do that throughout the hairline. You want to make sure, again, you go slow. This is sped up, but you want to make sure you are cutting crisscross. Oh, okay. You want to make sure you're cutting not in a straight line. That's what I'm trying to get at. You want to make sure you're cutting like in a zigzag motion so it's not easy to detect the lace. And the sides were coming up just a little bit, but it's probably because I didn't use a lot of glue. I should have, but I don't plan on keeping this wig um, on my head for a long period of time. So I'm only doing this for the video and for, you know, educational purposes. But you want to make sure you use more glue on the sides. And it's also smarter to cut your sideburns. They do grow back. Um, you know, if you're into this wig life, really, it's easier to cut your sideburns off. But I just didn't feel like that. Jordan didn't feel like that doing that today. So we just go in and do what we gotta do. Then I just go in with a little bit of extra ghost bond and I just lay down the parts that weren't laid down before. Um, you don't need to use a big blob of glue for this, just a little tiny um, dot and just smear it across the place where you want it at. Um, make sure to not do too much because it will show through, um, but you want to just use a light amount and just keep working with it and little by little. Uh, then the next step, what I go ahead and do is part out the baby hair. Since I'm doing more dramatic baby hair, um, I part out bigger sections, but also make sure to pluck through your sections. Don't just pluck out a section and think that's your baby hair and start slicking it down. You can always pluck more just to make it look more realistic, no matter how you know um, dramatic it's going to be.
and I go ahead and slap that elastic band back on just to make sure everything's in place and this is where the styling part comes in you guys know I always go in with the trusty hot comb that's how I start every single almost every single step that I've done in this video I'm um, always messing with the hot comb it just helps me get everything flat um, I didn't see in the video that the track was showing on the side, but I fixed it eventually. But, you know, in the video, it's just like there. But it, it wasn't like that afterwards, just to let y'all know. Now on to the styling portion. Uh, what I did for the styling was just add some curls. The one thing I can say about this wig, I did love the lace. The hair was nice. But the one thing I can say is it doesn't hold curl very well. Um, even with ample hairspray, it doesn't matter how much you use, it's not gonna hold after about, you know, 10 minutes. It's pretty much gonna look like you walked outside in the rain with a blowout. Um, but other than that, it everything else about this week was pretty good. That was the one disappointing thing. Um, but you know, for the pictures that I took and stuff, it seemed to work out for me. After I finish curling through my hair, I go ahead and take off the elastic band. You want to make sure you first wrap it tight, and second, um, you want to make sure that you take it off slowly because sometimes the product can still be stuck on there. You know, you can give it a little bit of force, but you don't want to rip it too hard because it'll create that gunky white cast. Um, if it's smooth and a little white, nothing makeup can't fix, but you don't want to make extra product come up off the lace. next thing I do is go ahead and pluck through my baby hairs once again because even though they're dramatic I still want to keep plucking it just to make it look as thin as possible more realistic um then after that what I go ahead and do is cut my baby hair so I cut it fairly long when I'm doing dramatic baby hair because I do have to wrap the barrel around the curl um, if that makes sense well not the barrel but the flat iron um the half inch flat iron around the baby hair so make sure it's long enough to where you won't burn yourself because i've made them too short to have burned myself multiple times please learn from my experiences don't do that you'll have a big fat scar on your head so then after that um i go ahead and curl them after i cut them about an inch long i want to say maybe longer than an inch i don't know you want to cut them long so that you have time to cut them shorter because the worst thing you do is cut them too short and now you're looking stupid because you can't do it anymore. So this is only for if you're looking to have dramatic baby hairs. If you don't like baby hairs, you can cut this step out. You can do whatever you please with it. Um, I particularly like baby hair that's long. That's just me though. Some people don't like it. You know, to each his own. That's your preference. Um, if that's the case, you probably can skip this part. Just go towards the end. It's up to you. And once I start, once I start combing through the baby hair, what I go ahead and do is cut it in a waterfall motion so that it looks like it's shorter in the front and growing longer towards the back, um, kind of like regular baby hair. But um, I, here I just play around with it, add little swirls and swoops, um, just wherever the curl falls. That's kind of where I mold my baby hair, and then I go in with some gorilla snot. 
um, and I just mess around and mold them. Um, I put a little bit on the front. I put more on the front than the back. Um, but afterwards, you can either leave it like this or you can comb it out once it's set. That's what I like to do. I like to comb it out just to make sure it's a little bit more fluffy. Again, it's not set and stuck into my head right now because I didn't use that much. But um, afterwards, I'm still going to go in and comb it out. I'm just going to use this little spray that I have. I should have went in with the black one, but I grabbed the brown one for some reason. And just spray the top, not where the baby hair is, but the layer above that, um, just to make it a little bit more full looking. Um, and then go in and pluck as, as I go, things like that. It is a little brown because I use a brown one instead of a black one, but, you know, it's for video purposes only. So it's very, it's not as obvious in person. Um, then I go in and just restyle with the curling, things like that. I don't know what I'm doing. I pretty much gave up at this point because I know the curls don't last. So I just started going any direction. Don't do that. Um, it's probably not the best option. Here is the final look of the wig install we just did together. Um, it came out really good. Again, this hair is sponsored by Bios Hair on Amazon. I'll leave all the information about this wig down below in the description box. If you guys have any further questions, just leave a comment down below or any requests on any new videos you guys would like me to do. But that pretty much sums up this video. Leave a like, comment, and subscribe. Thanks for watching. Bye.